Hello, everyone. I'm Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to episode number 484 of the Nutrition Diva podcast. Welcome. This week, I want to talk about the health benefits and risks of alcohol. Is it time to rethink our definition of moderate consumption? But first, if you need a break from your hot, crowded gym, check out Elevated Fitness. They let you stream workouts anywhere, anytime, with no equipment required. Their low-intensity interval training workouts are fun, fast, and they're designed to speed up your metabolism, help you sleep better, and give you more energy. You can subscribe at www.elevatedfitness.com. That's E-L-E-V, the number eight, dfitness.com and get your first month free today by entering the promo code DIVA at checkout. For decades, we've been hearing a lot about the health benefits of moderate alcohol consumption. Now, drinking a lot of alcohol is obviously not good for you, but some analyses show that people who drink a little alcohol seem to live longer and be healthier than those who don't drink at all. There are several possible explanations for this. The correlation between moderate alcohol consumption and longevity might have nothing to do with alcohol. It could just be that people who drink moderately tend to have healthier diets and lifestyles than those who don't drink at all. The higher death rate among teetotalers could simply reflect that people who are in poor health, and therefore more likely to die, are also less likely to drink. Another possibility is that small amounts of alcohol might have beneficial effects on the body. For example, alcohol does reduce the tendency of blood to form clots, and that might reduce the risk of stroke. Well, as a society, we seem to have latched on to this idea that small amounts of alcohol are actually beneficial. And this perception is helped along, in no small way, by the alcohol industry, which funds research designed to show that drinking is both safe and beneficial. Moderate alcohol consumption is often listed as a feature of healthy dietary patterns, such as the vaunted Mediterranean diet. But have we just been telling ourselves what we want to hear? A new meta-analysis comparing drinking patterns and life expectancy of more than half a million people from 19 different countries finds that anything over five drinks a week is linked with shorter life expectancy and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Do we need to rethink our definition of moderate drinking? The definition of moderate alcohol consumption differs from country to country, and that suggests that cultural norms and attitudes about alcohol may play at least as much a role as actual data. Here in the U.S., for example, we define moderate consumption as one drink a day for women and two drinks a day for men. Sweden sets the bar lower, France quite a bit higher. According to this latest analysis, however, all of these recommended limits could still put you at increased risk. Look, the only way to reduce your risk of alcohol-related harm to zero is to reduce your consumption to zero. But remember, risk is merely an expression of statistical probability. It does not predict the future. Some people who don't drink at all will die younger than some people who drink way too much. The real question that each of us needs to answer is whether the benefits of drinking alcohol outweigh the risks. Before I go on, a quick word from our sponsor. During the summer, the last thing I want to do is spend time cooking at a hot stove. I'd rather be outside enjoying the beautiful weather. And that's why I love Daily Harvest. They deliver pre-measured cups of frozen organic fruits and vegetables directly to your door. All you have to do is add water or your favorite milk to the cup and blend, heat, or soak. It's the perfect thing to have on hand for those days when you don't have time to cook. But even when you do have time, you might just reach for a Daily Harvest cup anyway. I love their vegetable-packed soups. They're really flavorful and satisfying, and the vegetables are so fresh. Go to daily-harvest.com and enter the promo code DIVA to get three cups for free in your first box. That's promo code DIVA for three free Daily Harvest cups at daily-harvest.com. And now let's take a closer look at the actual benefits that we get from drinking alcohol. First, let's be clear, we do not need to drink alcohol to keep our hearts healthy. Foods like ginger, 
garlic, and oily fish have the same or better blood thinning effects as alcohol. And you can get all of the beneficial antioxidants and polyphenols that you get from red wine by drinking a shot of grape or pomegranate juice. If you enjoy the flavor of alcoholic beverages, or the pleasant sensations that accompany the alcohol-triggered release of endorphins, or the social aspects of sharing a drink in good company, those could be counted as benefits. If you're enjoying those benefits to the tune of five or fewer drinks a week, you're at very low risk. If your consumption is between five and 10 drinks a week, you are at slightly higher risk, but that might be a risk that you're willing to accept in exchange for those benefits. The more you drink, of course, the fewer the benefits and the higher your risk. Once you're above 10 drinks a week, the risks start to climb rather exponentially. I think it's also important to recognize that simply counting drinks per week can give us an incomplete or distorted picture. Mary drinks one glass of wine with dinner every night. Joe doesn't drink all week but goes out on Saturday and has five beers. Statistically speaking, Joe is in a lower risk category than Mary. But there's little doubt in my mind that Mary's drinking pattern is actually safer than Joe's. There's also the sobering fact that alcohol can be addictive. The more often you drink, the more susceptible you are to its habit-forming nature. Having a drink increases your desire to have another, and at the same time, impairs your ability to judge whether or not that's a good idea. One drink a day can quickly lead to two, or three, or before you know it, five. Because it's so widely consumed and accepted in our society, excessive drinking can seem quite normal. If you frequently have more than three drinks in a day, or more than 10 drinks in a week, or you repeatedly try but fail to change your drinking patterns, it's a sign that your drinking may be out of control. Even if you feel that your drinking is not a problem, taking a 30-day break from all drinking can be a very helpful way to reset your habits and to reassess the impact of alcohol on your life, health, relationships, wallet, and waistline. And the more unthinkable it is to take a 30-day break from drinking, the more you might want to seriously consider doing that. Some people discover that they actually enjoy life more without the benefits of alcohol. Others simply find that it is easier for them not to drink at all than it is for them to drink just a little. Here's the bottom line. Risk and moderation are both subjective and relative concepts. Whether we're talking about alcohol or red meat or roller coasters, each of us is likely to assess the benefits and the risks differently. For many people, alcoholic beverages can fit into a healthy lifestyle. But I think it's time to stop promoting the questionable health benefits of alcohol and start being more honest about its costs. Thoughts, comments, questions about this topic? I'd love to hear from you. You can post on our website at quickanddirtytips.com or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Also, just a quick reminder that the Way Less program kicks off this week and not again until next year. Wayless is a group coaching program that I created with Brock Armstrong of the Get Fit Guy podcast. We help people achieve sustainable weight loss without dieting. And you can learn more at wayless.life. But don't wait as the doors are closing soon. <laughs>